Welcome to Cordyceps. This is an amazing um, tonic herb that's actually a fungus. And it's been used in traditional Chinese medicine, TCM, for many thousands of years. And it's, of course, since migrated to the rest of the world because of its powerful healing and stamina building properties. So let's look a little bit more closely at what's the difference between cultivated and wild harvested. Uh, because while there are many people that might prefer wild harvesting their herbs with some plants, such as cordyceps, there can be a real difference. So it's good to know what they are. So essentially, there's over 400 different types of cordyceps. The three that are most commonly seen in the market are cordyceps sinensis, cordyceps militaris, and cordyceps ophioglossides, right? Um, in common language, they're commonly called caterpillar fungus or caterpillar mushroom because they often grow up out of the skeletal of the caterpillar. Um, so this is where they grow and how they develop. Now in the West, they're identified with the respiratory system, the cardiovascular system, endocrine system, and the reproductive system. In traditional Chinese medicine, we identify them with tonifying yang. Now yang is everything that is protecting, warming, moving, transforming, right? And also with tonifying the kidneys. Um, cordyceps does this. And kidneys in traditional Chinese medicine, besides having what we would identify in the West as kidney functions, includes things like being able to take deep breaths, proper growth and development, reproductive system, uh, and the source of yin and yang, and another um, substance known as jing. It's not actually a substance, it's an energy. And jing is your essence, right? So this is a really powerful herb that gets down to all these levels. In the West, it's considered adaptogenic and immune enhancing, right? It really helps build the immune system. So, and it's got powerful anti-aging properties. So it's gonna be used to treat things like chronic fatigue, kidney disorders, um, in particular male sexual disorders, uh, infertility around that. Athletes very popularly make use of cordyceps uh, because it's being studied for its possibility for um, probably building a little bit of testosterone, but definitely for building stamina. Uh, it's been shown in athletic studies that it can increase your VO2 max, right? And that's a, um, a, a barometer for how much your aerobic act activity, right? How much uh, endurance you can have. It can increase it by up to 11%. And that's important for everyone, but for athletes, that's a big deal. So let's look at the differences. So first of all, cordyceps ophioglossides, these are, they actually grow out of a fungus that's, um, uh, that's a slightly different fungus. It's um, Eleophrosotoseps, right? So it's a different plant. It's not coming out of the caterpillar, right? So, but it's still a cordyceps, right? 400 different species. So you'll see it. It'll be used in um, commercial products. It's not as difficult to um, uh, cultivate. Similar functions, same things, chronic fatigue, uh, regulating blood sugar levels, uh, fighting inflammation, right? Cordyceps really kicks in for inflammatory diseases from all over the body, including Alzheimer's and uh, uh, asthma, things that you know are triggered by uh, inflammation. So now we get down to two really primary examples. Cordyceps sinensis, this is your wild harvested. It has dark brown fruiting spores, white tendrils, known as mycelium, uh, and this is harvested in the wild. Now this is going to be like $10,000 in US dollars a pound. So you're not going to see a lot of this. If you do, this is why the price is so high. The primary difference between this and Cordyceps militaris, which is the cultivated version, is all Cordyceps contain a compound known as adenosine. And this is a compound that uh, helps inhibit neurotransmitters from being stimulated. When they're stimulated, they can keep you awake at night. Um, and they're, so, that's, so this is really how cordyceps helps calm the system down, right? That adaptogenic, lower stress level quality uh, also enhances athletic performance. And it is absolutely at its highest level in the wild cultivated cordyceps sinensis, right? Cordyceps militaris is being cultivated, right? Because not everybody can afford those prices and you want to preserve wild plants, right? So it will be cultivated by growing it on um, 
uh, brown rice flour and some other grains, for example, some of those compounds can get in the powder. Um, not a bad thing. We all eat brown rice. Um, but it does change the chemical compound slightly. It will still contain adenosine, but it will also have a higher uh, compound profile of what's known as cordycepin, right, named after the, the plant itself. Mushroom, not really a plant. And this is a compound um, that uh, used to be synthetically just kind of like pulled, not synthetically, it used to be just wild harvested out of the cordyceps. Now it's produced synthetically, right, because this is um, another really good one for um, um, strengthening the immune enhancing qualities um, and building, um, you know, fighting inflammation in the body, lupus, arthritis, all these kinds of ailments. So there you have it, a little bit between the cultivated and the wild, why it's okay that it has a little bit of brown rice flour or other grains in your product because this has helped lowering the price but still giving you access to all those important compounds and cordyceps, but still a nuanced difference between it and the wild. There's a reason you pay more for the wild. Alrighty, got a question or comment? Please leave it below. I'd love to hear from you and don't hesitate to visit whiterabbitinstituteofhealing.com to find out more how you can be using this amazing fungus.